Hey, yo, what it do, it's Young Honey, and we're continuing our Let's Play. I, uh... Let's hear, let's hear out what this gotta say. I think I got it. And it's on camera, God bless. I'd like to thank the Lord for this content early in the first minute. Um, <coughs> sheesh. So, today we're gonna talk about some of life's bigger disappointments that I've found, but, but, <laughs> To help uh, make it a little more positive. You know, I'm also going to share some of the uh, better parts about, you know, growing up, getting older. Sharing some perspective on what I found there. So, we're going to get into that in just a sec, but... Sheesh, I really had to do it to him there. <laughs> I had to steal all their shit. Oh man, I usually fuck up this mission. But yeah. The reason why I wanted to lay these out is I, I feel like a lot of the most disappointing things that I have, right? Like, they're just jokes. Let's get moving on this mission. Okay, I guess not. Um, a lot of, a lot of the disappointing things, like, they're, they're jokes, they're, they're for jokes. Some things I also feel like I want to talk about, but more than anything, like, I really want to focus on the more positive aspects of things, like, just because mental health situations can be difficult. People may be struggling. I don't know what's up. And sometimes there just gotta be a conversation, you feel me? Let me see if this resets things. So, one of the most disappointing things that I've personally experienced is realizing how useful a political science degree is. And I say that because I have a political science degree like incoming I'm looking for real jobs it's fucking useless just terrible whoever like it's helpful for what I want to do you feel me like like, I appreciate so much of what I've learned. Like, zero doubt at all. But at the same time, the job prospects after are not great, in my opinion. If you're, if you're looking to do more private ventures, sort of deal. It's definitely a little bit of a cause for concern. Um... <clears throat> At the same time though, it's it's taught me a certain amount of logic and thinking and reasoning that is applicable to my day-to-day -day life. I, I've really enjoyed a lot of my classes. I enjoy the attention that it brings my way um, in the sense that, not that it like gets people to fuck with me or like talk to me or anything like that. Like it doesn't actually get me attention. It's just, it brings my attention to things, I should say. I really appreciate that part of it and that's always something that I've loved about it. So like, I definitely can't hate there. But again, 
for making money. Sheesh! That's all. Uh, it's gonna be a haunting decision. Aw, oh, fuck. I'm terrible at doing these with the rifle. This is the real strat. It'll work, don't worry. There we go. Getting in a decent group. Oh, one more. Let's go. <laughs> You're pretty handy with that thing. Here, you earn this. What? Re upped on a ton of things in here. So, yeah, I will say, I will say, I thought that political science degree would open up a lot more doors than it does, but unfortunately. You know what public policy is not about? Common sense and providing to the people. So that kind of rules out everything there, which sucks. But it is what it is. <laughs> oh, what gun was I trying to get? This one. The next thing. Man, I, I didn't know... Can't the whole Kaiser Soze thing, like, 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 I didn't get the whole Kaiser Soze thing. That was confusing to me. I'd see, I'd see Kaiser Soze referenced in a ton of different TV shows. I'd see it referenced in like, uh, different movies, shit like that. Like I'd pick up on the references and I was really looking forward to coming across like where it's from, you know, like, I was like, oh man, this is funny as hell. Like, I can't wait to see the original version of this because I'm not going to go seek it out, right? Like, I, I, I like to have my experiences organically. And so, I was <laughs> I was scrolling through uh, Facebook Reels one day because I don't use TikTok because I'm weird as fuck. But um, I was scrolling through Facebook Reels and I saw the original Kaiser Soze screen, like scene. And I realized that it was Kevin Spacey. And this was after all the allegations came out. I was like, fuck. Like, like, are you kidding? Like all this build up for this? Like, like Kevin fucking Spacey, are you kidding me? Like, like words cannot describe my disappointment in that moment. I think there's a bobblehead here. There's a collectible, I think. I don't want to miss it. Hmm. Weird. But you're also, in general, you know, I was, uh, I was a fairly big Kevin Spacey fan before all those allegations. I really enjoyed his work in House of Cards. And I think, like, I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that. Like, he, he put in a lot of acting work through his career, right? He's saying recording, reset. Like he put in work throughout his career and that's okay, but it also doesn't excuse the allegations. And so you get the conversation of separating art from artist. I personally, like I, I can't in a lot of cases, this is one of them. And so really that was, that was when I realized that you don't necessarily have to cancel people because cancel culture does not exist, right? He's still getting work. I'm not watching it. And so part of growing up is realizing that people do shitty things and people that you like may end up disappointing you. But the good news is, is that it doesn't have to have any impact upon your life if it doesn't directly involve you sort of deal like you can get as mad at you as you want over one group canceling another group complaining about this or that or really whatever like whatever bullshit argument you 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 want to take a side on uh with the cancel culture shit like like 
everyone's been doing it and it's just it, it's weird to me people gotta understand that cancel culture isn't real it's not tangible it's not it's not taking careers from people unless someone's going to fucking jail so that's something i i, I wanted to say like it's kind of disappointing but at the same time it's it's really not something to concern yourself with unless you know people involved or you are directly involved. I I promise. <laughs> Celebrities aren't thinking about you when they do things. So don't be thinking about them. Um but yeah, I felt I felt like that was pretty disappointing to me. Like kind of coming to that conclusion that, you know, like there are really shitty people out there and they will do they will do terrible things and oftentimes they may be people that we even fucking looked up to like and it it's really a hard pill to swallow but it has to be done you know like there's no getting around it it's just a matter of accepting the fact that, yeah, you gotta be an adult about some things when others won't. I was trying to draw them. What the fuck? I'm doing the lazy man clears. But yeah, next point. Something super disappointing to experience. When I write a song, I get so excited to record it. I'm super excited to record it. Unbelievably excited to record it. I literally can't fucking wait. And then I record it. And it's dog shit. And it just hurts my feelings so bad. Like... I'll be out here thinking that I'm gonna sound like fucking Chief Keef, right? Bang old, going fucking in, just just popping. And then I play it back, and I'm like, "You sound like Ice JJ Fish. You sound like you sound like a whale fucking a donkey. You sound like you sound like the worst things I've ever heard in my entire life, all mixed together, and then like it was thrown onto a loudspeaker system that was grainy as it is loud. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like, well, damn, I guess I don't bug myself. Like, I guess I'm terrible. <laughs> but then I mix and master it, and then I sound solid because you know, it's it's not about actual skill level it's about your producer and it's about how well you mix and master it in fact to be honest with you guys before i mix and master these vocals i uh i have a similar voice to a uh, dexter from dexter's laboratory it's on god Let's learn about Jacob's sacrifice. Yeah. You know it takes 10 days for civilization to collapse. Yeah. You take away a man's basic needs and he will revert to his primordial instincts. In 10 days. Day. <laughs> That's a difficult thing to understand unless you've lived it. Second Airborne, all Americans, hoorah. <laughs> One night there 
was a, an ambush. And me and this guy named Miller got separated from the unit. No food. No radio. Nearest base, 200 clicks to the south, so we just started walking. Well, by the third day, I knew we were lost. Day six, ran out of water. You know what that's like, don't you? Difficult to swallow. On the seventh day, Miller's legs started going all wonky. Did you know your brain starts to eat your muscles in order to survive? That's why you're so goddamn skinny. That's after you lose all your fat. Day, the wolves were closing in. And I looked at Miller and I could tell we were But if you're if you're in their situation, you probably have low body fat. You probably don't. Got a drum kick tummy. You see, I wasn't just looking at Miller. I was looking at an opportunity. It wasn't something I wanted. It was something that I had to do. It was... It was my test. You see, Miller's sacrifice wasn't about me walking out of that desert. It was about bringing me here. We have their purpose. You'll understand that soon enough. Jeez. So, skipping over that... Resetting recording. Reset. Skipping over that absolutely appalling display of Barbaricism. Um. Super fucked up. Uh, <laughs> I just want to say, another huge disappointment in life. Motherfucking honeydew. Bro, it looks so good. It looks almost fucking magical, to be honest with you. Like, it's green, like, it's neon, like, it, it literally looks delectable, right? And then you bite into it, and if it's not like the perfect piece of honeydew, it's it's just disgusting. Like I can't I can't stand that shit. And so that's always massively disappointing to me. And it was also further massively disappointing because I thought that shit applied to all melons. I lost out on so many melon opportunities. Like just because honeydew turned me off. Like cantaloupe, cantaloupe isn't like that. Cantaloupe is buying it. Like, like the fact that they did an entire fruit like that is just wrong to me. Like, like how do you how do you fuck up making a fruit? Which which food scientist allowed that to continue? I don't know. That shit was heartbreaking. You know, like you you, you realize you realize that your options are very limited. In a lot of situations you know sometimes you think you think that you're getting dog shit like with honeydew but and you give up but on the other side you got a motherfucking cantaloupe yes sacrifice the like i don't know man i always thought that was deep as hell not actually but like let's be real I think we've all experienced that to an extent. I'm surprised I haven't fucked one of those up just yet. Oh. It's very easy to die during those for me. Oh, just because I get careless, like I get mad sloppy and I just drop the ball real fucking hard. Like, the bag simply fumbled. Beyond belief. I'm up. What'd it do? It starts 
again. Oh man. I think we only have to do that one more time. Getting close to the end game. Barely unlocked anything. But I'll make videos for that. He knows you're ready to do it. Look. Trials. See? He's got it all planned out. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. Then he's got you. It becomes second nature routine. He gets in your head. You don't even realize it. You can't ever go back. You understand? You can't ever go back. Come on. Truck. That truck's gotta be there. Gotta get on that truck. It's almost done. I've studied the route for weeks. It's the only way out. You'll be safe if you don't. You're gone. Damn. Damn. I had a really weird itch in my ear, but also that was crazy. I always liked that sequence. Ah. Oh. Problem with Florida is that our bug to human ratio is unreal. Fucking 50 degrees outside. I don't know how it's scientifically possible that I got bit by something, but I got bug bites all over my ear. All over, like, my body. I'm so itchy, bro. <laughs> all right. Next massive disappointment. And, like, trust me, this one hurts. This one, this one bothered me for quite some time. You slow, unmarchable. Oh. And er, the slow, unstoppable march of time. That shit is never ending. And the biggest motherfucker is that you just have to accept it. Because if you dwell on it too much, then you're losing out on precious time. If you don't acknowledge it, you may waste precious time. <laughs> Like, it's such a clusterfuck. And I've... That's always made me so fucking angry. But I also find it really, really, really funny. That's, uh, what's his name? What's her name? Dr. Perkins? We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll go help out Tammy. And we'll go from there. While flying in an aircraft, you can refill ammo by pressing LS and RS. I don't play co-op. That doesn't apply to me. All right. This one's kind of upsetting all around. And I got to apologize, but it's something I think needs to be said. I don't know the average penguin lifespan. I'm guessing it's not longer than a human lifespan. And I'm guessing because they're birds, you know, I don't know how fucking long birds live. But I'm just guessing due to their size, due to the elements, due to what they have to deal with. Penguin shit, you know? Um. I think that the penguins from March of the Penguins may have passed on. And that's mad upsetting to me. That's just kind of accepting the march of time thing. There are going to be some things that it just mind fuck you like that. It's absolutely fucking bonkers.
Hmm. But yeah, time is unstopping. It's just a concept, but you know, you do what you can about it. So, this one's also a fun one. As you get older, any older person can attest to this. You realize, it's fucking terrifying to get older. Bro, paying taxes. Like, I don't, you don't pay your tax. I'm not like fully explaining taxes right now. But if you're not familiar as to how all that shit works, okay? Like, you get money taken out of your paycheck, you get money taken out of literally every form of income you make for the most part. Like, like it, it, it's frustrating and then if they don't go towards things that you don't agree with, it's, it's even more frustrating because you're like, what the hell? Like, I paid for this, I paid for this fuckery. Oh, um, not just that. Growing up means that you have different responsibilities. And that shit... That shit's always, like, a very hard pill to swallow at times. Set. Like, literally, it's just one of those things that, like, it's never gonna stop bothering you. It's never gonna stop happening. And for the most part, you just got to accept it because, you know, again, life. So, the next thing, looking above my waist after puberty. Gotta say, I thought I was gonna do better. I really did. It's okay. They're fixable things. And I'm working on it. Disappointing nonetheless. Another very disappointing thing. Looking below the waist after puberty. That shit ain't never changing. I'm joking, but also you not. You're given what you're given. Be happy with it. Accept your body. It's perfect how it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like that's super important. <laughs> Way more dilation than I expected. Can't thank you enough. With this guy here, I've got everything I need to synthesize a formula. Here, take a test batch I was working on. Should help you hunt these damn things down. Nice. But yeah, I do figure that those two things are pretty, pretty relevant to bring up just because dang old dang man. <laughs> gotta come to terms with it. Um, the next thing. This one's actually sad. The smartest people in this world, they are not in charge. They won't ever get close to being in charge. Odds are they're too smart to talk to the average person so they'll never obtain political or business type power, you know? So the most qualified people, the people that you would want to see running the show are not. That's, that's a real kick in the nuts if you ask me. Like, we assume not that our government and systems are infallible. We don't. Most people I think right now are distrustworthy of the United States government, international government, overall, like these things in general. Like, I think that they're not 
in a place where they're very accepting of them. Right? Yet, at the same time, most people are elected to government positions. You know? <laughs> Like, they literally do keep getting reelected year in and year out. They don't provide a whole lot of utility to the population. And it's just kind of disheartening to see all the time. Like, smart people are literally living their best lives, vibing doing what they can. Either they have been blessed enough to afford a lot of opportunities to put themselves in a great financial position or they're working a job that does not appreciate their brilliance. And that in itself is incredibly upsetting. And so, you know, like, they're usually not the ones making the decisions like we think they should be. It's usually some jackass who said the right things to the right people, paid the right amount of money on his campaign or her campaign or their campaign. And odds are they, they don't really know what they're doing. They have a vision for what they want, but they don't have a means to accomplish it. They don't have ideas about how to actually get there. And that's so problematic. That's so problematic to me. It's also infuriating. I think I think it bothers just about everyone to an extent. Where the fuck is everyone that's shooting at me? Oh! What the fuck is happening? What the fuck? So yeah, that's... That's, there ain't no jokes. That's just straight up upsetting. You know, and there's really not a whole lot to do about it except radical acceptance, you know? The people in charge are not that smart. It's better to have your own contingency plan in a lot of cases that coincides with local governments. So for example, I'm not saying be a doomsday prepper. That's, that's unhinged, but I wouldn't have a whole lot of faith in your town council knowing procedures for an evacuation. So I would do the due diligence and go and learn that myself. I think that it's important now more than ever to be capable of doing things on your own like that. And I thought, just trust, trust. Like, I'm in fucking public policy school. <laughs> I have faith in a lot of a lot of politicians, but unfortunately not the majority. <laughs> so this is kind of similar. This is kind of similar, but I'm gonna preface this with something a little more positive. Religion does actually help a lot of people become better people. It gives a lot of people purpose, meaning, and direction in their lives. I personally am not a very religious person, but I can appreciate the people who are and use actual teachings from their religion to kind of find a good, good moral code for themselves where they're not really hurting others and they're living their best lives. You feel me? Like... There are absolutely people out there like that. I would say they are the strong majority of people, you know, like, like most people are not religious lunatics. Like you would see portrayed on TV that's satirizing like the American experience sort of deal. We, we got idiots, but not all of them are religious fundamentalists, especially like the ones in this game. You feel me? So I feel like that's something really important to get out there before I say my next point. But the next point is a lot of people use religion to justify being a shitty person. They use religion to justify doing shitty things and pushing their views onto other people. And there is, it's, it, it's unfortunately inescapable. 
If someone really wants to preach, they're gonna do that. That's gonna be their fucking money. Alright, that did it. Give me a second. And I've never I've never liked it. Like a lot of people truly use religion just to be an asshole. Look down at others and push a belief that they they think is better. And so that's always rubbed me the wrong way. And it's kind of disappointing to see how prevalent that is in society in general. All respect to religious followers that don't let it make them, you know, be an asshole. You know, but at the same time, there are so many concerns that I have for religious communities because of the way that they choose to operate. You know, like there's some very, very, very disappointing religious leaders from multiple religions, you know, that are doing the rest of the observers of their faith a disservice. Like it, it's it's just wrong. It feels skeevy to me. And so I've, I I really want to put that one out there. There we go. Oh man. So yeah, that's that's kind of unfortunate. Let me reset recording. Reset. Um that's definitely just an unfortunate fact about things. Uh this one this one is a disappointment, but it's also a good thing. At the same time, and I'll explain. You know. You need to take care of yourself. You need to do things that are good for you, that are going to make you feel good, that are good for your health, that build you up. All clear. We're just gonna be happy. Can't say the same for people who don't share his taste in music. Maybe we can work on this whole trust thing after all. Got more work for you back at the wolf stand if you're looking to keep busy. See you around. So, yo. Yeah. Taking care of yourself is, it's just vital. But it's also a really daunting task because it's like, one, where the fuck do I start? You know? Like, that's a big undertaking. Especially if it's something you've never really done before. You know? Like, I really, 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 really thankful for my upbringing, but I didn't have to worry about what food was stocked in my fridge or what was going in and out of my body because it was generally healthier things. And my parents had always set up like different sports for me, like rec leagues for me to play in. And they pushed me to get involved in athletics and keep up like in school, make sure that I was well-rounded with uh, social life and education and there's there's a lot to be said for that but at the same time when i moved out on my own especially the first time i went off to college i really struggled i really did and that self-discipline is really important to learn you got to learn how to take care of yourself you got to learn how to do how to do things right for yourself but i guess you're full of surprises all right calm down head up to the chalet i will head to the chalet right now Kind of far from everything, no? Um, but yeah, like it, it's hard to learn. It's a hard self-discipline to follow because you also have to unlearn behaviors that you thought were healthy. You have to identify what unhealthy behaviors are. And you really, really got to keep a positive attitude about it. But once you start to get into that rhythm, it feels so fucking good. It, it really feels like nothing else. So that's... It's disappointing, but it's also super exciting. <coughs> like, I'm definitely still working on it. I'm not the poster child for healthy living. I'm very far from it. But even still with the changes that I've been making in my life and the goals that I've been working on and been achieving, like, it's so rewarding. 
and all you have to do is look out for yourself. How fucking dope is that? Come on now. <laughs> So yeah, I, I am fairly big on acknowledging that yeah, you do got to take care of yourself as an adult, and that sucks balls a lot of the time. Just super, 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 super frustrating. But at the same time, it opens the door for so much, and frankly, all of us deserve that. Oh jeez. God damn it. But yeah, just by just by taking the effort, you're you're not only gonna learn a lot about yourself, but you're gonna learn a lot about how you best function in different environments and under different stresses. You're gonna learn about how other people function because odds are you're gonna wanna ask a friend for advice on how to do things. Like, it's something you should absolutely be doing. We all approach life differently and maybe some of your friends got good fucking ideas about how to handle it. So, I feel like, I feel like it's really, really, really important to take good care of yourself and to make that an active part of your life because just that general mindfulness and attention to your well-being will ultimately make a massive difference, in my opinion. Like, I could be wrong, but I think that's supported by the science. Not just any science, the science. Get that boy planted. Get the fuck out of here. Drop the chopper. Money shot. In the video games, when you complete a mission like that, you get paid and rewarded. Life isn't like that, bucko. Before I got paid for so much of the kinds of work that I do, especially the freelance type stuff, I had to do so much fucking free work. And a lot of that, like, they were for good causes, you know? Like, they, they were for charitable causes. They were, like, volunteer opportunities. And that's something that I view as getting paid for with, like, soul enrichment or whatever you want to call it. Whatever hippie bullshit you want to call it. Like, it, it feels good to help people. So that's the trade-off you get with volunteering. But at the same time, it's still free work. Good work is usually not very profitable. It doesn't mean that you still shouldn't do it. You know, because eventually those time investments are going to come back to you and it's going to be very worth it. Reset it. So, yeah, that shit is really like really, 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 really frustrating to an extent. And 
it's a little bit degrading to literally anyone who attempts to work hard and put their passion into things. But at the same time, it's just the world we live in. It's something that we do unfortunately have to deal with, but it gets better. It does get better. <laughs> Ooh, comic book. So, I mean, I'd consider that. Like, at the start of your career, when you're doing, or life, I guess. I'm not at the start of my career, I'm at the start of my life. Like, when you're at the start of things like this, like, we don't, we don't have a whole lot of security and we gotta do like top quality work and odds are it's just gonna push the needle. And I don't wanna say grind it out, be a slave to a nine to five and really just like disregard your own needs for a workplace. Like that is absolutely not what I'm saying. That's not healthy and that's not conducive to a long-term cycle of healthy living. Like, I, I just don't see it. So, with that, I just feel that if you do work that rewards you and you do a good enough job that you're proud of it and you're able to maintain and keep working, you're in a good place. Right? The best work is usually profitable down the line, but at first it's not. And so that's kind of disappointing to recognize, but you, you, you need to understand that every job that you take, every undertaking is an investment in increasing your value and what you can bring to the table each, each day in and out. Personally, I've always liked that. Like if you put in, if you put in the time, you put in the work, you figure out a way to make connections within a certain industry because hard work and time isn't going to be your sole, like your sole X factor, unfortunately. Um, you really, really, really just got to fucking pay attention to these things. Be mindful of it and really gauge your situation. I know it's not in the cabins, sweetie. It's fucking shit. So yeah, nice job. On to the, next one. the last thing is not as serious because honestly, yeah, you'll, you'll understand why in a second, but to an extent, everything on earth could just exist, right? We could all show up to a job that we're either assigned to or that we take ourselves. We can make, we can make ends meet and we can make the world continue through trade and collecting commerce okay. and Continue consolidating commerce and so we don't really need the dollar system we don't hypothetically need governments but at the same time the alternative is full-on anarchism or libertarianism full-on anything ain't it <laughs> you know so that's real fucking disappointing. We literally settled on enjoying social media and enjoying stuff like, like, like capitalist commodities. Like we like our movies, we like our TV shows, we like our video games, we like our bookie books. Like, and none of that's an issue, but it does come out of price. It does come out of price and that price is Unfortunately, people can't afford things. 
People can't live and be fully free like we all would like to imagine is possible. And that's partially on capitalism. A lot of it's on capitalism. And a lot of capitalism is on religion. And so, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I feel like that's something that's pretty important to note in this situation. Like, we could just be, we could just exist and vibe and have a good time. All of us. But we choose not to. Because dollars are more fun to collect. <laughs> If that ain't some shit, I don't know what is. Stash should be somewhere. Shit. There's a cult patrol headed your way. Better hurry. Gonna take that nice and slow. Just so I can grab this for Weedy. Your bait now. Big boy. So yeah, something to keep in mind. Right? So in a moment, I'm gonna flip over to the good parts about getting older, figuring things out, growing up a little bit, understanding the world a little bit more. Also, keep in mind, like, I'm partially doing this, I'm gonna probably watch this in like a year and be like, damn, what a fucking idiot. You know, like, one of those things. But I'm gonna switch over to the more positive things. Reset. Shit. That's the last dash. Deputy, you're not too far. Stop those peggies from taking off with our supplies. Hmm, that's kinda far. But yeah, first thing is Aging is fun until you hit about I guess, I guess maybe your late 20s, early 30s, I think, to an extent. I'm not having fun with aging and I'm 22, but I've been told, I've been told I'm an 80 year old and a 20 year old's body. So I'm being kind of generous. I'm thinking like you can drink, you can drive, you can rent a car, shit like that. Aging is literally just gaining experience, dog. It's not a bad thing. At no point in your life do I think that you should, uh, be upset about that. <laughs> I don't think it's something to dwell on obsessively. I don't think that your age is something to hide or be self-conscious about. I think that it's something to be really proud of. That's something like, you know, you're making it. You're getting through everything. Those are some incredible graphics. Just look at that. Um, so I think that's one of the better parts about getting older is you literally are just gaining experience. Like, ain't nothing wrong with it. Things are just getting cooler and you know more. Like, there's there's scary shit with it. Like I said, like, like there are taxes and realizing that people are terrible. But at the same time, you can drink and not at the same time, drive a car. You know, that's, that, that's fucking awesome. Like, I, I take it for granted. I feel a lot of people with cars likely do. But if you have access to that, you can, you can go anywhere, whenever. As long as it's connected by land, you have the money for gas or access to electric charging. You know, like, <laughs> there's so much. That's good about it. I shouldn't have used it fast. Um. But yeah, it, it's not 
It's not something to be bothered about. It's some shit to be excited about. You know, like, aging is a good thing. It's a positive experience. So... Also, even more so. By working and being proactive, everything does get a shitload easier. You have significantly less problems. As time goes on, as long as you're conducting yourself right and, you know, just trying to better yourself and take positive, ah, positive steps forward. I feel like that really can't be overstated. I may be able to make it to the wolf stand. Um, so, also, at this point in human history, dog, we got endless content and media to consume. Which means that if you don't want to go and explore the absolutely fucking beautiful world outside your door, right? You don't have to. You can go on an adventure from your couch. Not just that, you could put it on YouTube if you wanted to. Talk about a whole lot of bullshit throughout, but you could post it on YouTube if you wanted to. That's awesome. We, we, we are living in one of the greatest times of industrial evolution and innovation. It's, it's something to truly behold, and it's exciting to see where, we're, where, where we'll end up going after this. I mean, there's now an Oculus Rift that can literally kill you if you die in the game. That, that's incredible to me. How'd they figure that out? How'd the eggheads in the lab cook that one up? <laughs> Who decided that, yeah, when you die in the game, these three things are gonna puncture your skull. Let, 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 and then who said, let's fucking design it? We lived during that time. That's unreal to me. You're not excited about that. You can go fuck yourself. Like that, <laughs> that shit's something else. Like we are literally watching technology grow at an unprecedented rate. And I think that that's, that's amazing to see. Dust in some bunker. This is a big help. I can't believe you caught those guys. Thanks for getting our shit back. You did good, deputy. I'm glad you're on our side. You're welcome, Wheaty. It's time. Oh my god, it's time. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. I need to get a bulletproof vest. Um, gonna need a lot of these. It's an uphill fight. I like killing the seed family as fast as possible. Reset. So, just watching technology grow is incredible. We, we really are seeing some remarkable things and all jokes aside, seeing augmented reality becoming a thing, that's unbelievable to watch. Being able to, like, like I, I was born before the first iPhone, but after the internet. So I kind of, I, I do remember a little bit of the world kind of pre-social media and all of that. And the differences are that some are upsetting. I don't think that we connect like we used to anymore. I think that it's I think that it's made socializing a lot more difficult, a lot more a lot more stressful and problematic for a lot of people. At the same time, you kinda can't ignore the benefits and the utility that it provides. Like that was, that that was one of the more exciting parts of the list while I, while I was making, while I was making it, <laughs> um, and 
I think that it's something to pay attention to. I think that it's something to really keep in mind. Technology may be limited for a time in the sense that it's cost restrictive. And that's a pain in the ass. But at the same time, it will become less cost restrictive as it becomes more available. And as more powers begin to work on manufacturing microchips. Right now, it's just the United States entering its manufacturing game with China, already handling most of it. That's going to diversify a lot more in the coming years. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be really, 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 really good for us. Who knows how we're gonna be gaming in the future? Who knows what we're gonna be able to do? Who knows like what like our systems are gonna be able to pull off, right? <laughs> well, I think that's one of the most exciting things. But um, I think that I think that past that, one of the best parts about. They're giving me the shaft with these deaths. Jeez. One of the best parts about getting older, seeing all my friends succeed, seeing, seeing people that I know and love go through things that brought us all down, that made us all upset, that hurt to watch them go through, and then ultimately overcoming that. It, that feeling is indescribable. And I love that so much. Like having, like having that support for friends not only makes life a lot easier just because it makes me realize how much I have to be thankful for, but also, also, it's literally just nice to see. Like, who doesn't want to see the people around them thrive? Like, it makes me want to do better. It makes me want to match that energy. It makes me want to do, like, hit their level. I feel like that's, that's not only rewarding, but it's genuinely nice. It's a genuinely positive feeling, you know? So, this isn't really similar, but friends, family, all of that. As you get older, you might discover your parents may be cool. Bro, my dad fucked with Pink Floyd a whole lot when, when he was growing up. <clears throat> Don't worry, he'll be out of here soon. I did too. When we started talking about that, it turns out we shared a lot of other sim similarities in our music taste. <laughs> Talked about some other things, turns out we enjoyed other things together. You know, like you develop a different relationship with your parents and I think that's something really, 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 really cool and interesting, but also really, really fun and something to look forward to. You are a tool. You know your purpose. I'll shut the fuck up to this. Wait. So another like super exciting thing, you can get a pet. Like, like if 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 you can if you can handle it, you can get a pet and no one can stop you from doing it as long as you can take care of it. Right? That shit's huge. I fucking love my dog. <laughs> oh jeez. That ain't how I wanted this to go. Oh, um, like that shit's huge. Just having, just having an animal to love, to take care of, to be around, like, hits on another level. And it's, it, it's so much different than having a family dog. It's so much different than what I expected, but it's still amazing. It's incredibly rewarding. And I'm like, I've, I don't think I've ever regretted the decision to rescue a dog at any point. 
Like, like I think that there were times where I've said, damn, I'm really stressed out about this. But at the same time, it's without a question, like, I wouldn't have it any other way. Dogs just end up being such special parts of our lives that, like, I don't know. Just had to mention that you are able to get a pet when you get older. That shit's pretty fucking sweet. <laughs> like a little loyal companion that just follows you around like a Pokemon? Come on. Come on. Don't lie, you want it. Like, I, uh, special attention to that, you feel? Um. Trying to get around all these corners. Oh, this one always feels bad. I'm gonna do it fast. I'm sorry, Eli. But yeah, you literally can just get a pet. Just promise to take care of it and then actually follow through. Very loving companionship. Gotta have it. Super nice. Kill him so fucking hard. I'm gonna take all like $23 off him. Resetting. Eli! No! No! What the fuck did you do? You fucking killed him! Wait! You fucking piece of shit! Weedy! You fucked the two! Weedy! I fucked the two! Wait! Weedy! It was Jacob. No! Listen to me. It was Jacob. We've seen this before. Ronnie. Parker. This is what he does, and we let him write it. You find that motherfucker. You find Jacob. And you kill him. Or next time I see you, so help me God, I'll kill you myself. It's not in your programming. But yeah, listen. Earlier I was talking like autonomy is terrifying. And it is, don't get me wrong. It's scary to live on your own. It's an adjustment period. It's not always fun. But it's also a lot of fucking fun. You're able to really find your interests. You have so much time to spend with yourself. You find time to create things. You find time to do things. You find you find ways to spend time with yourself. That's just invaluable, bro. I may need to focus on this. I don't fucking know yet. That's not... Okay. Grenade will work. So, that's just one thing I'm a big advocate for, like... Oh! 
What the fuck just happened to the audio? Are you kidding me? Are Molotovs better? Okay, I'm using Molotovs, I guess. So... Damn, I used an extra one when I didn't have to. But yeah, it's it's something to be super excited about. It's something it's something to really enjoy. It's not something to be scared of. You know? Like really, really, really just take the time to I, I I guess enjoy being by yourself and enjoy being alone because it's not a bad thing. It's scary at first for some people and it, it, it can be it can be a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That shit can be terrifying on an existential level. But you're gonna get so much from it. <laughs> I can assure you. thing is because you got some life experience you get you get taken seriously a bit more often that's pretty cool i'm not gonna lie to you every once in a while my opinion gets valued and i'm just like oh oh so you value this opinion like ain't no way like like like, like what and they're like yeah we will we do not we want to know what you think. And that shit's always exciting, especially when it's something like related to school or something that like I've generally been working on for a while. And I feel like that's just something that we should all be enjoying. Ooh, I got fucked up right there. But yeah, getting taken seriously. It's just, it's a little bit different. Doesn't happen a whole lot, but it hits a little bit different. So, not just that, not just that. I went into the room. I have a pickle suit. Think anyone told me not to fucking buy that? Think anyone told me I couldn't go and buy my own pickle suit? The answer is fuck no. Because I'm a grown ass person and I can buy a pickle suit if I so choose to. So for that reason, I'd embrace that whole process of growing up a little bit. Fuck it, this may be easier. Like people take you a bit more seriously you got a little bit more weight in your decisions. You're able to do a little bit more. You know, like, like you're a little bit more trusted in different positions. And that's also a really good feeling. It's a good confidence booster. And the more that you're in it as you get older, like the better it feels, the more comfortable you are there. And it, it, it kind of sounds scary, but it, it's also one of the best parts about everything. $25 is what I got from him. And I'll teabag him. But yeah, no one fucking saw me from getting that pickle suit. We set.
So also, every single day you get to chase your goals. You get to work towards what you want to do. I don't know if he talks to God. That doesn't matter. You get to discover so many new things. And most importantly, you get to choose side missions. You can help people out whenever you want. And you get slightly rewarded for it a lot of the time. That shit's a real life side mission. You literally can find mini games to do within like your day to day life. And I, I fucking love that. Like it. So similarly, I'm skipping that. But similarly, the people you meet are on a similar path as you, you know? And so while they may not be nice, everyone you meet in life is at least gonna be slightly interesting. <laughs> They're gonna have their own take on things and you're probably gonna wanna hear them out at least a little bit. <laughs> It'll either blow your mind by how, pro how profound it is or how fucking stupid it is. Where are we going? That deputy proud of yours and a whole bunch of our white tails are wasting away in Jacob's armory. Get moving. We're counting on you. Wait. Gotta be a faster way. I knew it! I fucking knew it! I knew that there was a collectible there. Um... But yeah, people are going to be interesting. You're not going to like everyone. Not everyone's going to like you. That's just the way it is. Like, whatever. You feel me? People are still going to be interesting. Dialogue with people. Listen to them. That shit is fun. That's an exciting part of growing up because you can actually understand things with more depth as you get older and with the more people you fucking talk to. You know, so I think that... It's a fun but also important thing to do in life. Like, really go out there. Also huge. Bro, I don't get carded for rated R movies. It don't happen. I can watch rated R movies whenever I want. That shit's huge. Enough said there. Alright, I'm gonna shut the fuck up and just kind of try to do this relatively quickly. Because I only got like three bullet points left. I think I'm gonna kill Joseph. Or like take him into custody sort of deal. Immediately after I do this mission. So that I can do... I, the way that I'm thinking is I want to get a few Let's Plays going. Um, but I want to get through the campaigns and do the next game that I'm planning on doing each time. Like get to that point. Um... And then at some point later on, go back and do like 100% run, like finish up all the loose ends, finish up the stories, get like the whole narratives, like literally all of that. Just because there's so much to appreciate in these games and I'm personally limited on time that I could spend doing this, but like I also love doing it. So I, I, I'd like to do my best to get as much in here as possible and then move on to the next stage of doing Let's Plays. What?
Get beat up. Ultimate Hunter inside of the bunkers is just fucking unfair. Like, it's just filthy. Dang old just beat up on people. Get fucked. But yeah, so like, I think that, I think that this may be the session that we wrap up the, the, the campaign. You know, um, I'm gonna return to all of the mini game or all of the uh, all the games that I do a let's play of at some point, and I'm gonna like expand them just because I want to get a nice ground level going first, like gain experience, learn how to edit these better, things like that. But um, yeah, I think we're done with the campaign. He's about to just flood everything. I'm not. I'm gonna get the fuck out of here mode because we got a whole fucking boss fight to do, y'all. Also did these in like super long stretch so, like sessions. Probably could have split some of them in half, but it also don't matter. <laughs> Again, the main reason I do these, if you didn't check that last episode, uh, the main reason I do these is entirely for fun. I just love doing it. It helps fill up time during my day. Like I, I just kind of get like some extra energy out like while I'm recording things like. You know, it, it's just it's just a fairly good time. So I do I, I do primarily do these for fun. Um Oh my god, Pratt, you gotta get me up, buddy. Pratt, you can't leave me here, pal. Gang. So yeah, I genuinely do these like for sheer enjoyment. Like I have fun, I have fun with them. I have fun writing my scripts and everything. And like, it's nice to get like watch time and things like that from, from my videos. But at the same time, like it's just, it's just a fun, fun little thing I do and I'm trying to get better at it. And so that's why I'm trying to do the ground level right now. I'm just trying to play through some games, get into a comfortable editing style, recording groove, make sure that it happens. This shit ain't gonna happen if you don't make it happen. All right, Pratt's coming. I can't leave him after all that. I really can't. Resetting recording. Reset. Also, like I said, though, Jacob's region is ridiculously small. All right, back to the main point. As you get older, you do develop deeper relationships with people, and it's interesting to see how they pan out, because even if they're not like romantic relationships or familial, 
You meet some characters in life, and they can provide you with a wealth of experience that they've collected. And I think that that's something that's really, really, really fun and really exciting about it. And similarly, you get to change yourself as time goes on, and you get to actively watch it happen. Each of us found the white tail in our own ways. But what Basically, you? you're afforded more experience. Was lost. And that's the list. If you want to check out, you can. But I'm a... I'm gonna kill Joseph Seed. Friends. Maybe not kill, but I'm gonna take him in. Eli gave us back a little piece of that. He showed us the only thing we can rely on is each other. He was my friend. I'm going to miss him. It wasn't you, Eli knows that. Eli thought if we could just hang on, wait it out, Eden's Gate would just go away. But they won't. Fuck, no, they won't. Cancer doesn't fade. It grows. Spreads. You have to cut it. Yeah. These fucking yeah, we need. The end of the world is coming. Yeah. It is for them. Eden's gate ends today. Peggy. We won't stop until every last one of those motherfuckers yes. is yes. hanging from these trees. That's yeah. right. Another seal has been opened. My family, my brothers, my sisters, they've been taken from me by a snake in the garden. You got a little shit on your face. Okay, there you go. I thought I knew God's plan. It's a weird way to think about it. We will welcome them with open arms. Just as we will welcome you. We will be waiting for you. Where it all began. Sure you will. I'll see you there, bucko. Let's get let's get stacked for this. I don't want to be cutting people down with the laser. Damn, really?
big spender. Oh man, I lived. Nice. Let's get it. This is what we've been waiting for. I've been wanting this fight for a minute. Dang old can't believe it's about over. Damn, I almost vaulted the water. We're taking the long way. Actually, we're not. After all of that, you know what I'm gonna do? I think we do that, bud. Let me reset the recording. Reset. Damn. See, I guess that you could drive all the way in here and like really build up the suspense and the hype and all of that. But this video is already almost an hour 40. So I'd like to avoid that. Uh, probably that way. Yep. Faster that way. It's time.
broke the fifth seal. I saw under the altar the souls of the martyrs, slain because of the word of God. Just but God is watching us, and He will judge us on what we choose in this moment. I told you we were living in a world on the brink for every slight. Justice. Every choice reveals our sins. And where have those sins led us? Where have those sins led you? Your friends have been taken and to here. And it's your fault. Countless people have been killed, and it is your fault. The world. I'd argue that one. That one too. Was it worth it? Yes. Was it? Unquestionably. I realize that every problem cannot be solved with a bolt. Probably never. When you first came here, I gave you the choice to walk away. You chose not to. face of God, I'm making you that offer one last time. You put down your guns. You take your friends. You leave me my flock. And you go in peace. Go in peace. You're fucking insane. You see? never should have been here in the first place. You know what to do, Rob. I do know what to do. If I take everyone with me and I leave, mm -hmm. Dangle Only You song is playing, and it's assumed that I kill all my friends. God is watching. So, in the face of God, with God watching, I choose to resist. Put your nipples away, my guy. Like, you haven't put on a shirt this whole time. You're fucking around with chemicals. I'm just saying. Your friends now see the truth. They welcome Eden's gate into their hearts. They will die for me.